how to take pictures of baseball and softball. What we'll cover in part one, gear and exposure. Who are you shooting for? Who are you taking pictures of? Determining where to shoot from and planning your shoot and the shot plan. Gear and exposure. Baseball and softball are day games. So, most any camera that you have will work. Lenses. We have two options. A two lens set with an 18 to 140 as your infield lens and a longer 100 to 400 or 150 to 600 for your long shots. Or a one lens setup with an 18 to 400. So the 18 to 400 has the equivalent of the 18 to 140 and the 100 to 400 in one lens. Much more convenient. However, you do not need the long lens. My first year of shooting baseball and softball, I just used the 18 to 140 and it worked fine. Exposure, shutter's priority. One sixteen hundred of a second, ISO auto, manual. One sixteen hundred of a second, aperture wide open, ISO set to auto. Who are you shooting for? More so than in most other sports, this affects how you shoot baseball and softball. First, yourself, then maybe just one or two friends or whoever you're shooting on the team. Yearbook of journalism, you just want maybe a half dozen or so good pictures. Or if you're shooting for the team or the school, you need to try to get everyone. Why? Because you don't know who the MVP or award winners will be. It could be any one of the players. And you want the seniors. Who are you taking pictures of? Make a shot list. A shot list is a list of who you want to take pictures of. For instance, just your friends, or all the players, or seniors. For the seniors, you need a list of the jersey number or the positions they will play. This is for the senior presentation poster and athletic awards. And check off the players as you take their pictures. It's very easy to miss a player and you get through with the game and you find you don't have pictures of one or two players because you weren't keeping track of who you shot and who you still have to shoot. Where to shoot from? Before you can answer that question, you, answer, you need to answer the next question. Who are you shooting? And that is defined by your shot list. Don't waste time reinventing the wheel. If you find a picture you like, reverse engineer it. In fact, we can take this slide as an exercise. Pause the video and look at each picture and try to figure out where the photographer was shooting from. Draw the line between that position and the player, and you have your shot line. This is a picture of the Carmon baseball field. Picture from Google Earth. We have a couple of things to talk about here. One, look at the field. If you look at the left side of the field and the right side of the field, you notice the field is not symmetric. What that means is, Shooting position on the right side is not the same as shooting position on the left side. Same thing with the left. If you want to shoot on the left and you go to the right, that shooting position may not exist. Next, the field does not match what you may think of as from pro fields. So a pro field may have certain shooting positions or certain places where the spectators can be. Well, as you can see from this picture, 
There are no bleachers on the right side. The bleachers are only on the left side. So your sh again, your shooting positions are going to be affected because the high school field is different than a pro field. And in this case, part of that is driven by terrain. Just to the bottom of that dugout, the ground drops off. So there is no ground there to put a bleacher. Next, we're going to talk about where to shoot from. The circles indicate shooting positions. And the lines indicate the shot line. Example, red circle on the right out at the outfield fence. Red line going towards home plate. So I'm shooting from the outfield fence down the right foul line to home plate. Similar with all the other circles. Those are shooting positions, and the lines indicate the players that I'm shooting at from those positions. Example, the blue circle on the bottom. Purple lines indicate I'm shooting the infield, third base, shortstop, and second. And the outfield, right field. Similar with the other positions, you can, you can see where I'm shooting from. The idea when you do this is make sure you got every one of the players. When you do this and you realize, hey, I don't have a line going to center field. Well, you need to think about how do you shoot center field from which position. Another thing to note about this is you're going to compare this to the next screen. At the bottom of the screen, that blue circle, look carefully at the picture. The fence takes a little bend right to, to the right side of the dugout. So there is a little notch that I stay, I stay in that I'm sheltered behind the, the dugout. That notch does not exist on our softball field. On the softball field, the fence is in line with the dugout. There is no notch to duck in and hide. So for softball, I have to find a different place to shoot from. Do the same for your softball field. On this field, look along that bottom fence next to the dugout. That fence goes straight. There is no notch where you can tuck in and shoot from. This is what I meant. You've got different fields with different setups. What you can shoot on one field, you may not be able to shoot on another. So the pictures that were sh shot from that particular location on the baseball field, you have to find different locations to shoot those same players from. Walk the field and do a site survey. What you want to do is check what you plotted on the aerial picture. One point to remember, the aerial picture was shot from a long distance away. It will not show you everything. In my aerial pictures that I've looked at, many times fences are not visible in the aerials. So when you go on your field survey, you're going to find out, hey, there's a fence here that I didn't see in the picture. So, some of your plotted lines may not work. You have to look for alternatives. Some of the locations that you reverse engineered on the internet, they may not be usable in your field. There may be a fence there, or that location may be unusable. Look for different views of the field. You may find better places to shoot from. As I said, the aerial pictures won't show you everything. Take sample pictures from each of the locations to document what you can get from those spots. Look for and document safety issues. For example, third base, stay behind to protect the fence when you're shooting at anyone other than the batter. Because when the batter hits a foul ball, if you don't see that foul ball headed towards you, you're in trouble. Elevated ground, what is it? Well, it says ground, so it's probably terrain. It 
terrain, but there's another kind of elevated ground, man-made objects. Two pictures on the right. right, top right, the walkway going around the second floor of that building. You've got a great elevated shot into the baseball field. You're going over the outfield fence. Bottom right, there's a little balcony there. That's even better because you're, you've got an elevated shot right into the infield. That's probably one of the better elevated sh locations I've seen. So, elevated ground. Let's talk about picture left. We have three orange circles. Those are the elevated ground. But if you're looking from Google Earth, the only elevation that I can see is the middle orange, where you can see the berm that the that trail is going up. So you can see, okay, with a berm, it's going to go up. But the left and right orange circles sure looks like flat ground to me. To know that it's elevated, you've actually got to take a site survey and walk the area. The other thing is, when you walk it, you're going to find out just how much elevation you have. Do you have enough elevation to clear that outfield fence? If you can't clear the outfield fence, that particular location is a no-go. Example, the middle orange circle, that trail. The lower portion of the trail, headed towards the bottom right-hand corner, is too low. The portion of the trail where it makes that right-hand turn inside that orange circle, that's the highest point of the berm. From that point, you clear the, the outfield fence. From the portion to the bottom, the outfield fence is in your way. So again, you have to walk the facility and see, do you have clearance? Circle on the right, that's a hillside. Ah, but like the berm, is it high enough to clear? Again, you have to walk the site and see, do I have enough elevation to clear that outfield fence? View from the elevated sites. Reference picture at top right with the three orange circles showing our elevated locations. Left by the building, middle on the berm, right on the hillside. From the left orange circle, we're shooting down that green line towards home plate. That is picture left. Picture left was shot with a 300 millimeter lens on a micro four thirds camera, which is approximately equivalent to a 400 millimeter lens on an APS-C camera. Now, picture bottom right. That is shot from the hillside. That was a wider shot shot with an 18 to 140 lens on an APS-C camera. But it is a little further than the left-hand orange circle. So you probably will need a 400 or a longer lens to get down into the infield, depending on how wide or tight a shot you want to get. Probably from that location, I would choose a 150 to 600. These pictures also show you another thing. You have to do a site survey. Without actually walking to those sites and actually taking these pictures, you wouldn't know whether you've got a, you've got a clear shot over that outfield fence or not. Maybe that left-hand circle you were just a little bit low, and the outfield fence blocks your view. So you had to you have to go and check it out. In fact, some of the terrain between the left and middle orange circle drops just enough that you have the fence blocking you. So you've got to go there and pick your location. Where exactly do you clear the fence? Next, document. Update your field plots. 
delete unusable shooting locations and shot lines, add new shooting location and shot lines. Document your shot planning picture with any relevant details. This is for the next generation of photographers. What lens did you use? What's the exposure and any cropping data? How high is the backstop? How high is the backstop is something we'll come to later. And document the safety issues. Example, about the third base where you need to stay behind to protect defense. Plot in pictures, baseball. This example shows, picture left, the plot of the sh shot. In the blue circle, where you're standing, the red line, the orange line, the shot line to this first baseman. On the right, sample pictures of what you can get from that position. At the bottom of that insert is the lens. It's indicating an 18 to 140 lens. So you aren't in the dark as to, gee, what lens do I use to take that picture? See the other video on where to shoot baseball from by position. That is in the card above. Plot in picture softball. This is a different way to document the same thing. In this case, it's done on a slide, like a Google slide. Top, we have the catcher, pictures, pictures by shot line, same thing as before. And picture top left is the plot with the shot lines. Right above that picture, there is two lines. It says red, yellow, blue, blue. That corresponds to the sample pictures. So the four pictures, top row, red and yellow, bottom, blue and blue. So you can look to your plot line and see which of the plot lines was used for each picture. See the other video on where to shoot softball from by position, linked to with the card above. Plan your shoot. How will you get pictures of all the players on your shot list? Where and when will you move around the field? If you only have one player to shoot, let's say your friend is on the first is first base, well, you may only shoot in two locations: one to shoot first base, and the second to shoot when they're batting. Whereas, if you got more people on your shot list, you have to figure out more places where you can cover them. You may not be able to cover the catcher from where you're shooting first base. You may not be able to cover third base when you're covering first base. So again, you have to think about how you can cover the different positions you have to shoot. This is an example of a shot plan. For each inning, I have where I'm shooting from and who I am shooting. For instance, first inning, I'm shooting from the scorekeeper's box and I'm shooting the pitcher. So the same thing goes for all the other innings. Note fifth inning. There is something called the mercy rule, which may end the game after five innings if one team is, I think, 10 runs ahead of the other. They may terminate the game after five innings. So when you look at this shot plan, and when you actually execute it, you have to be watching the scoreboard. If one team is starting to run ahead of the other, you may have to jump some of your positions to get to the end position that you want to be in. Otherwise, you may be caught at, in this case, center field, and you didn't get to your position for sixth and seventh inning. So have a plan. What will you do? if the score starts getting lopsided and you think the game may end after the fifth inning. Note down at seventh inning, I have a position right side of home dugout. That position exists for our baseball field, but not for our softball field. So for softball, I would have to have a different plan for the seventh inning. Related videos in the channal, afternoon games, bursts and continuous shooting, 
Common shooting problems. This is for how to shoot through a chain link fence. Stage shots. Tracking a moving subject. Baseball. Where to shoot from by positions. Softball. Where to shoot from by positions. And senior presentations.